I don't like that. Yeah, I've never seen that. I'll call the open workshop to order. I'll take a roll call. Uh, this evening, President Broderick and Vice President Wilback will not be attending, uh, so Trustee Desmond will be uh, chairing the meeting. Uh, I'll start with a roll call. Trustee Cruden. Present. Trustee Desmond. Here. Trustee Finnerty is absent. Trustee Garlick. Present. Trustee Luanda is absent. Trustee Munoz. Here. Trustee Ryan. Here. And Vice President Wilback and President Broderick are both absent. I'll ask everyone to turn to the agenda. There are some minor changes from what you had. So as I get to them, I will uh, point them out to you. Um, two trustees that would like to move in second. Well, I, I guess. Well, I, 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 I'd rather. <laughs> Got it. Trustee Ryan and Trustee Kroon. Uh, Good. Thank you. Uh, we'll start with coming? number one. Number one is approval of our minutes from the previous meeting. They are received on communication. It's just those last two that you did not see, Miss Laura Craig and uh, Cisco Espinoza, which are in your packets. Number two. That brings us to number three, which was money received. There was a finance committee meeting. Monday night, uh, I'll, as I get to the financial resolutions, I'll point them out that the committee and central office did go over those. So starting with number three, our monthly money received. You need another? You want a black? Resolution 4, it would help if I gave them out to you. Um, it, it communications, a letter. A student that wrote a letter about it. Yes. And the student did reach out to me today. He asked me to read his letter into the record. I explained to him that the board secretary, I don't read any letters into the record, but someone can read it in his behalf. So I believe that that's what he's going student's to Students gotten a lot of awards. Yes. This is, if you remember, this is our intel. All right, so going back to four, the board report was sent home with the package last night. This is the board secretary report. Bring you to resolution five. See what the claims and accounts, uh, and you'll see in the one, two, three, fourth paragraph, this includes the retro payments. And uh, we're all up to date with the end of the year, end of the fiscal year purchase order. Six, a contract with Above and Beyond Learning. Uh, this is to provide services for a classified student. Uh, it's an out-of-district placement. Associates, it's consultation support uh, to assist with uh, consultations in regards to IEPs. Mm -hmm. 
Beth Brano, special ed teacher. Um, she's going to be assisting in the autistic program. Uh, not to exceed eight hours. Uh, she's assisting in in her in home parent training. Accounting and Consulting. We spoke about this at the last meeting. And I have a couple of transportations. I'll start with 10. 10 is an emergency transportation. Recommendations of trial study. Um, Eleven is an addendum to a previous contract we had. Uh, this is including an additional pickup and drop off at Horizon High School. Starting on July 5th. So we'll be sending two? No. Go ahead. It's an additional student in a wheelchair. Mm -hmm. So there are two students now on this route. So he charged us an additional $50. Yeah. The old cost was 237 They brought it up to 287 for the additional yeah. student. <clears throat> Twelve is our 2017-18 renewal contracts for transportation. And as you said, we saw there was a breakdown of the old and new costs. I have a question about this contract. Is this sure. by approving this tonight? Does this lock us in for the entire year? I know if we choose to do, but let's say another viable option comes along that's more cost effective and we can explore that route, would we be able to get out of this contract and engage in a, with another provider or anything like that? I don't know, Mitch, that sound like anything to you, Mitch? When we have the yearly contract for transportation, if we decide with a particular vendor we'd like to leave early? No, I think, I think there, you, can, you know, there's no penalty. Right. It's Okay. 13 is a resolution for unrecognized titles. This is the resolution we do every year, trustee recruiting. Um, we uh, have to submit to the county superintendent and get the board approval for any title okay. that is not recognized by the state. So uh, coordinator, technology facilitator, uh, assistant supervisor, assistant director, all titles that we have been doing year after year. Oh. Uh, this year we would like, um, under uh, Dr. Lanco's leadership and vision, to create a position of coordinator dean of students after it is approved by this board and our county superintendent that it would go out to post and then we would interview and fill that spot okay. four spots. And Dr. Wonka will elaborate on that plan a little later on. Okay, 14, it's approval to apply to the state of New Jersey, Department of School Facilities and Finance. This goes back to the 9th Street property. 
Uh, this allows us to continue in that process with the state. Glad to see this one back. Yeah. Right. Once again, it doesn't mean we're doing anything. We're just doing your homework. We're just moving the ball down the field a little bit to get ready if you decide to do something. <clears throat> I do have the survey. If you ask, it's on my desk. If you want to see the fact that it is a landlocked property, I'll pull that out later. I've been there, I've seen it. Okay, 15. Find a to get in, and then you can dance around all by yourself because you can't do anything else in there. 15, back in May 29, 2014, we did a resolution with an ACES co-op. Uh, I'm going to ask Mr. Smith to assist me with this. Uh, we went out to a uh, open uh, auction process on electrical. Uh, we went out through a service called Talon Energy, I have Talon through Enernoc, where they uh, went to an open auction on, electri on uh, electricity, and they got about, what was it, 12? 11, 12. 11, 11, 11 active bids for our electric contract for the next two years. So we took the lowest bid on it, it's much lower than what it is now, and it's uh, projected to make a savings for us. Uh, this came through us through Enernock, and if you look at the receipts, a page back in the resolution three, I believe, on money in, we just received a check from Enernock for eight thousand nine hundred dollars in change for being on call to shut down on high demand days. So this is saving us on our electric costs. Our gas will still be with Aces, which is uh, the Alliance for Competitive Energy Services. But uh, they went out to competitive auction on this, and we're happy to, uh, to be part of this. And hopefully it saves us uh, a lot of money on our electric needs. Um, Leo, the yeah. 8900 8, Yes, yeah, it's almost 9000 But yeah. is that for the year? No, last year we got about $35,000 from them for shutting down on high-peak demand days. We oh, shut yeah. down certain oh, areas really. of Thank our you. buildings. And, they us. and they, we get money from them every quarter on this. So, uh, you know, it's nice. And, uh, and a lot of times when it happens on a weekend, the campuses are shut down anyway. So our meters aren't really spinning to that this degree. This is when so. you just say yes. And let the record show, Trustee Finnery is with us. Uh, I have a series of placement and handicapped pupils. I'll take them one at a time. Number 16. 16 is a revision from last month. Uh, the one you have in front of you today, you'll see the highlight, e, uh, extended school year only, 34 day. That's the language change in the resolution. That's why it's a revision. But this is the same resolution that we did last month. So I'll point out anything that's a revision versus a new one. Okay, 17, Essex Valley School, you'll see one student, uh, you'll see a price for extended school year, you'll see a price for the 10-month program, and you'll see a start date, and then you'll see two other, uh, two additional students, IH and JH, in their program. You'll see Morris Union Juncture Commission, four students. Two students. Resolution 
2020, ECLC of New Jersey, three students. And you'll see the breakdown of extended school year and the 10 month program. Here's a $1,000, actually $950, no, $1,050. Difference. Is there? Could this be a typo, Lord? With the 19 the transposition on the money? So I was thinking, maybe. It does add up. It does add up. I just, um, it just seems. Why is there two different prices? Yeah, they're both going to the same place, but it could be services. We can check it tomorrow. We'll check. We'll I just, we'll, 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 I just we'll want to make sure it wasn't a... We'll check the services tomorrow to make sure there was no transfer. Oh, <laughs> no, if it's including related <laughs> services, there usually is slight differences between the uh, we'll related services. 21 community school. You'll see one student. It's the 10-month program. Yes, George Washington, one student. You'll see the ESY and the 10 month program. Just out of curiosity, how are these schools chosen for these students? It's, the, it's driven by the IE. It's driven by the IEP. It's driven by the IEP. Yes. Uh, so each school offers a particular specialty service yes. that is indicated the by the this, IEP. Yeah, disability, the needs. Uh, different schools offer different programs to meet those needs. Okay, thank you. 23 <laughs> Developmental Center for Children and Families. You'll see one student. It's just the extended school year program. Four, Windsor Prep, two students, same thing, you'll see an extended school year program, and you'll see a 10-month program. is for inside. 26, we had bids uh, for food services. These were the results. We spoke about it at our finance meeting. Uh, you'll see it's broken down into, I believe, four. I'm sorry, six. Four bids. Um, and as usual, we went with You'll see from a I'm sorry. You'll see a breakdown of the results on all the bids for each of the categories. First one, there's the no. only bidder. Yeah. Cream, yeah. Cream, this, yeah, cream of land uh, uh, was the only bidder on the milk products. In the second one, um, NA, they don't. They, they don't carry that particular item. So you're forced to go with the one who go, does. Right. Even when it's more. <clears throat> well, it's it's not really more. It's well, they don't carry it. It's. Yeah, no, no, but I mean, set. on some of this stuff, yeah. they do carry, but they carry the majority of what it is right. we need. And the third one, 
actually wasn't sure from the wording what the recommendation. Seashore produce. They were, they were the one out of five. Dramat right? Yeah, but I, I guess I was looking for something that specifically said instead of me assuming that that's what we're doing. It, it should have been highlighted uh, in yeah. gray. The winning bid, it didn't come out on the copy. It might be the way it came out on my copy. Yeah. The original. yeah, probably because when we do a highlight. But it's a big difference. Big difference, yeah. Contract of Deb Ives, um, modeling and reasoning with <coughs> mathematics, grade three. We received our allocation for uh, Title IIA money, so the directors will begin planning the professional development for the school year. So now on August 23rd, you'll see that the directors will be bringing in the consultants for the three full staff training days and four and a half days. Uh, Director Ayala chose to work with grade three this year. Dr. Deborah Ives is well respected. 28 is personnel to data analysis teams for the upcoming school year. <coughs> Dr. Dagan, going yes. back to 27 sure. minutes. The, the choice of grade three, did that have anything to do with the data collected from? Or Right, just so rotating that the first year that the students um, face the park, so it's good to get in with those teachers to uh, work on the uh, New Jersey School Learning Standards for Math. And last year, I believe she did five, so that co cohort went through. So now we're going back to the beginning in third grade. And what you'll see uh, uh, in the next uh, item 27 is the data teams. So with the 2A money, we are afforded the opportunity to provide funds to teachers, individual schools to look at the park data from the previous year, and uh, that's also provided to Edward Science, and they will be the turnkey staff in each building, working with the principal to provide the PowerPoint and, and the data that we use for our new assessments. Dr. Dugdon? Yeah. What happened to room school? There's nobody there. Some of this would be because of um, a, a rift, and people, have, and in September we have to adjust. So, we'll so they may have been chosen, but they might not be. Yeah. 29 is facilitators for professional learning community projects. names on here of teachers that have resigned. Um, I'm sure we're going to mm -hmm. adjust it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Question on that, Dr. Wanko. Was there a thought to bring in eDoctrina to help with curriculum writing? Not to write. To, Excuse me? Not to write, but to evaluate. To evaluate. Right. And uh, the person who is going to be working with that, uh, I think we have a resolution tonight for that person. Correct? For the uh, consultant for curriculum. We have that on yeah, tonight's agenda. Okay, uh, 
That brings us to 32 approval of transfers for the 2016-17 school year. Any particular questions for Mr. Smith or Matt? Um, once again, Finance Committee went over this. Appropriations transfer. Appropriation transfer? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, he's a transfer. I no, no, well, that's financial. Yeah, financial. financial. Yeah. It's like I don't see names. Yeah, as you know, we've been, <laughs> the last couple of months, it's pretty much been a monthly resolution. Yeah, yeah. I would just like to say, especially since I spent my first couple of months constantly asking for stuff, I really appreciate the information we get, the format it's in, and how detailed it is. So, thank you. I, I'd just like to make a comment also, again, and I echo what Mary Jane said with the uh, time, effort, and energy that's going into the financial sector here. Uh, but the question I had is if you go to the last page of the handout that we had earlier where you have the overview of the June 30th uh, month and it looks like the uh, we ended the year with $44,000 in encumbrances and available balance of $3.291 million. Is that correct? I'm not looking at that same report, but the... This is a, I see Oh, right. This is the, yeah. The Board Secretary's Board actually does a little better job, especially at this time of the year when all, you know, this well, is a Well, uh, solid, just to follow up on a question, just well, looking at that. Is, uh, yes, we <clears throat> are down to $44,000 just over that. In conferences. So if I were to deduce from this report, we started the year with a structural deficit in the budget. Uh, correct, which was uh, two, a little over $2 million. And now if we look at this report, it shows that we'll end the year without a structural deficit. Is that correct? Well, the stru the, I think, <coughs> and forgive me, the, 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 I think you're talking about the fund balance deficit. Mm -hmm. The structural deficit was probably, you know, it was a moving target to see where we were at the beginning Understand, of the year. Right. The fund balance deficit was estimated at $2 million because of the um, the large amount of encumbrances and then the uh, budgeted fund balance from the 17 budget we had like 1.5 million dollars of budgeted fund balance and uh, yes based on the cost cutting that was taken and um, all the payroll the uh, personnel moves we've made um, yeah, we are going to end the year with a positive fund balance Okay, now all of this will be verified eventually with the CAF for audit and, and so on, but from your view right now, it looks like we're ending the year not in the red. Yeah, we will not be in the red, and you're right, of course, there could be audit adjustments. I'm still finalizing a couple of the grants. Um, there still could be some small movements. Um, the auditors could have, will have some adjustments. I think they're going to be very small, um, but yes, that is correct. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, number 33, you'll see 2017-2018 uh, ESSA Consolidated Formula Subgrant Application. This is uh, very late. We usually receive this in uh, June, and we do the application by June 30th. We're very, you know, late, we're very pleased. Um, the increase in Title I was $218,005. We also had an increase in uh, Title IIa of $131,450. And you also see that we did receive Title IV money, $39,000, and that's for social emotional intelligence. That's, that will help with our, um, could be bullying or addiction, and we'll give that to our Director of Student Personnel Services to come up with the program. Um, by, by approving its resolution, that means I can start to apply to accept the money. I will go to a workshop uh, next Thursday. We have to remember we were no child left behind. That is passed, and we are now SLESSA, Every Student Succeeds Act. Mm -hmm. So there will be some new guidance with that, but we're very pleased with the money that did come in for our economic advantage and our immigrant students. Resolution 34 is our non public aid.
Nexus 8 is chapter 192, and this is for nursing, textbook, security, uh, aid for uh, non-public, which is Yeshiva, Beacon, All Saints, and Maris. 35 is some additions to our summer program. Authorized uniform suppliers. 36. I'm sorry, 36. Attend the workshop. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, staff to attend the workshop. AP Summer Institute. It is uh, one staff member. Going to Rutgers University. Thirty-nine is a contract for behavior therapy. Uh, services provided by clinical associates. Trina. He is a individual contractor who will be coming in meeting with the staff, Dr. Bedman, Bedman uh, and take a look at what we have now and then make recommendations. E. Doctrina will be a separate uh, vendor that comes in and uh, meets with Dr. Degman first and then we'll have the committee work. So this resolution is for curriculum. And then the next resolution is going to be for technology. <clears throat> 41 is the technology, and you'll see that there's a, uh, there's a rate and a not to exceed. Again, I've met with Tom Fugu on this as well, and this person will be coming in doing the same thing that the curriculum director uh, will be doing uh, with Dr. Degman in the area of IT. Uh, 42 is Brown and Brown. It's for, they're going to assist us with a medical insurance review Have we ever done and that analysis. Before? Have we ever done that before? Done Brown and Brown? Yeah. Brown and Brown, we just had a presentation. When was it? Wednesday? I mean, have we done an analysis by medical insurance program before? Yeah, Monday. 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 I've been gone 17 years. I don't know. I, I don't think so. I don't no. think so. I don't, I don't ever remember hearing no. that, even while I was working here. Okay. This is a part and parcel of us going out and self-insuring on the prescription side. Uh -huh. uh, the next step may very well be self-insuring on dental, and then after that, self-insuring on medical. So they will come in and consult us as to what steps to take to show us all the pros, all the cons. We had a very short informal meeting yesterday, uh, myself uh, and uh, Brian DeLucia, who've, uh, who's now our consultant, and uh, representatives with Dr. Wanko and Brown and & Brown, and uh, it was quite informative. And because of the size of our district, we're probably sitting in a good spot where if we were to leave the state benefit medical side, because uh, in the last couple of weeks they've lost Newark and Elizabeth, their last, their biggest clients 
which means that the liability is going to be spread on districts like Bayonne. Uh, they canceled their meeting today that they were supposed to set the health care rates down in Trenton. It's the second time in about a month that they've canceled the rate meeting. Uh, if they come in with a rate next year of a 25% increase, uh, a lot of it. districts are going to be scurrying to s look for alternatives. So under Dr. Wanko's uh, vision, we got these guys in, we spoke with them, and they may map out a plan for us in case we, knew, we do need to leave the state, uh, state health benefits plan. So it's uh, purely consulting, and uh, it's good to have that information and those tools in your tool belt, so to speak. Is it possible? Oh, I'm sorry. I just wanted to make one other addition to that. In addition yeah. to that, my understanding is, and you can correct me, they're going to uh, provide a comparative of pricing uh, within the industry so that we would have a comparative of what's available based on what our historical spending had been. Yes, they're, they're going to come in and they're going to go out to a full market. They're going to meet with and visit every single carrier that provides medical insurance to <clears throat> groups our size in the state of New Jersey. Um, they're, they're going to bring back to Mr. Smith and Dr. Wonko and to the Finance Committee comprehensive proposals for all those different carriers so we can start looking at different options because, as Mr. Smith said, you know, we're extremely concerned about the state of the state health benefits plan. You know, with North leaving with an 80% experience rate, you're, you're really leaving behind school districts who are a lot worse off than they own, and we're going to be footing the bill for those worse off financial school districts, basically. The, the beauty in doing something like this is when you, in the situation where those two school dis districts left, you and the poor rated uh, employer group staying, that very easily calculates to an increase and premium, very high increase in premiums for the rest of us. When you're in your own, we used to call them GIFs, I don't know what you call them now, but when you're self-insured, you have to, your, your own group needs to be big enough to spread risk and hopefully a very healthy group, which is part of what they're going to be looking at as well, but um, you're not responsible for what happens elsewhere. And so even if we're it's if very we're modestly healthy from that same perspective. Um, we're looking at, you're probably looking at a minimum 15% increase in the state plan. It could be as high as 25%, as Mr. Smith said. And when it goes to 15, 18, 20%, we kind of go from moderate with our experience into actually good experience as that shift kind of happens. And it's going to be beneficial for us, hopefully, to get out of that time. So we're trying to get ahead of the curve and we're trying to. You have to know what you, who you are and what you've got. Is it possible to? Invite a representative of the BTA and the other unions to participate in like such talks or presentations. When is the that, information comes back. Yeah, when the information comes back. The reason why is because last meeting we had with the yeah. self. What? Yeah, Mr. Trustee Munoz, yeah. we did meet yesterday okay. on the prescription side with right. the BTA representatives right. and also NJEA representatives. Okay. And uh, we are keeping all of the collective bargaining units in the loop as to what we're doing prescription wise. Mm -hmm even went so far last week as to send out a, a notice to all the local pharmacies, you know, the Hidakos, yeah. the uh, uh, Rite Aids, the uh, uh, Uptown Dipmars, everyone that we found in the Yellow Pages, we sent a package to them about where the Bayonne Board of Ed was heading prescription-wise. And if they had any questions, they could call, email me, or they could call the hot desk at PROACT uh, the hotline desk and uh, and get answers that they need because uh, it's going to impact on, 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 a, on a lot of things. We're also in the midst of setting up a meeting prescription wise for the first week of school with all of the bargaining units and their members. Uh, maybe one morning we'll have uh, half the group in the auditorium in the afternoon we'll have the, the other half of the group with representatives from Fairview and uh, from uh, PROACT, which is the prescription carrier, to answer any pointed questions that any staff member may have regarding their own personal experience. So we're, we're, we're trying to do it, as I told Mr. D'Angelo, as best 
as I can, you know, in a seamless turnover. Right. So uh, we are, we're keeping them in the loop. Excellent. There'll also be a 30-day courtesy period right. for filling any script as well. Right. Well, I mean, not just the prescription plan, just going forward talking about, you know, changes or possible changes with the health insurance plan is not far as coverage, but maybe, you know, the alternative, alternate vendors, just so they're in the loop and they know, because I feel like the last meeting when we, was the last meeting? Was the last meeting yeah. when we approved the, um, the prescription plan, it seemed like Mr. D'Angelo seemed to be kind of caught off guard by it or wasn't fully, he felt fully consulted. I just want to make sure all of our unions are in the loop so there would be no miscommunication. That's you know, all. But we did talk about that change for six months prior. I, I understand. I just want to make sure that they're involved. That's, okay. you know, what I, thank you. Listening to the board, what I will make sure we do is when Brown and Brown, after their analysis comes in to make a presentation at a workshop, yeah. I'll make sure all the union leaderships are aware that the presentation will happen that night. It's up to them to be here. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. Just a quick question from someone who really doesn't understand a lot of it. But, um, how does this go along? We just did an interlocal thing with the city. Now we're talking about this medical insurance program. Can you kind of just define for me the difference between the interlocal that we Sure. Uh, the interlocal service agreement that the board entered into uh, was primarily focused on that prescription program. Right. Um, and so what happened was Fairview Associates went out on behalf of both the city and the Board of Education together. Um, they found what was called the PBM or a pharmacy benefit manager that would help lower the cost for both entities. And they were paid by the city for their professional services and then we both entities benefit from it. And as we go forward, they're going to be the liaison, if that's the right word you want to use, between the employers and the employees to navigate the benefits change for prescription things. What this, the new group, Brown and Brown, is doing a, it's almost like the homework or the beginning stages to that, but now for medical only, not for prescription. Prescription's done, it's, we're moving forward, we have contracts signed, and we hopefully are saving some money relative when actual experience comes in. What this is doing on the medical side of things, we're currently in the State Employee Health Benefits Program, which you probably know. Um, and as mentioned before, right now we're all anticipating increases of higher than 15%. So with that, when they come in, as Mr. Smith mentioned before, a lot of school districts at the last minute are gonna to try to struggle and maybe make a change to come out of the health benefits plan. They're gonna to wanna to find out when the rates come out in October and November, effective for January 1, well, what's my competition? What can I do to be you know, fiscally solvent and maybe save a few dollars? Well, when they're going out to market then with the other 100 or 200 school districts in the state health benefits plan, there's a limited number of providers in the state of New Jersey. There's only seven or eight and of the seven or eight, really, Horizon is still the major player. It is the player. The player, capital P. So they're going to be inundated with all these brokers and all these clients and municipalities looking for these quotes. They're going to have a backlog. When they get backlogged, they are good business people. They will rush quotes out, but instead of a 10% increase, they're going to be getting out 12s, 13s, and 15s. They're going to just make to back their money. Yep. They're going to make back all their money. What this is looking to do is we're going to do that homework ahead of time. We're going to have all the analysis done. We're going to look at all these different companies and what they can and can't do and have potential increases if the board wants to look to go out effective September 1st. So when the rates come in from the state, we could compare what our rate would be for that next calendar year, those 12 months, compare them to these proposals, and then start mapping out our future, <coughs> hopefully try to save some money and some funds for the school district and reallocate those dollars to the classroom where it's most important. Question regarding that, which I meant to ask earlier. It's important to know experience. Correct. It costs money for them to tell you what they already know about you, meaning the blues, what your experience has been with them. Usually you would look at at least two years' worth to get a real feel for um, cost. Mm -hmm. Are they going to? Well, luckily when we started the prescription process, uh, I'm assuming Mr. Smith was smart enough to ask for the medical experience as well. We have our last two years of medical experience in the state plan. We're operating about 102%. Right. 
So what that means is, is every dollar of premium that we've been paying to the state, they're paying a dollar and two cents out to doctors on your behalf. So really, if you look at us, we were on our own and we were rated by ourselves. From a medical perspective, we have a bad rating because we're paying out more than we're paying the premiums. So what would happen is generally, if we were on our own private plan, if we were 102%, when the renewal would come in, it would be about 22, 24% to balance that equation out. Um, they want you to be around 79%, 81%. That's kind of their optimal bogey book number to hit. So right now, we know where we are versus what we're paying. We're anticipating where the state may come in. We're just trying to be prepared when those state numbers, they may come in at a 5% increase, and we may all be wrong with our forecasts. And that for a year to retain us, but that yeah. might be it. Yeah. But it could be one year, and yeah. we can stay there for a year, but then we can start planning for that succeeding year when they try to fill us more to balance out that equation. It's a complicated process, so yeah. starting sooner is... Like it, it, it's a long, convoluted process, um, and it, it is, it's fiscally prudent to really start it now so we can vet things out and go through. Um, you know, because as, as you had mentioned, the, blue, the Blues are the biggest provider, and going to different providers, there are unique challenges to every single one of the smaller companies. I, I just want to, on that point, which is a very good point, uh, with insurance. Now, we did uh, successfully uh, hook up with the city with the prescription plan, but when you look at the entire budget of this Board of Education, probably 80 percent you don't have very much control over its salaries and and the people that are uh, you're paying but the other big ticket item is insurance and while we just mentioned we made some agreements with the uh, prescription plan now we're looking at the medical there's also a number of other insurance types of uh, expenses like workers comp like uh, Property and casualty, driver, you know, uh, driving insurance, auto insurance, etc. So, that whole category of insurance, if we're focused on it and able to do the right thing and get the best price, the payback is tremendous, as opposed to focusing on something that we don't get a big payback on. And some of the comments that we made with the risk manager, that was the person that was focusing on this to get the best bang for the buck for the citizens and for the district. Uh, thank well, as you. As long as the coverage doesn't change. I, you know, I mean, what you have, you have. And if we don't want to provide any less coverage than we currently have. Sure. Correct. This is not about changing coverage. Okay. Just like with the prescription program, we, we received a letter from the PBM Starting that they're guaranteeing people to were better. No, we're this right. will be the exact same way. They're going to take our exact level of benefits. They will quote on the exact same thing. Okay. Thank you. Point by point. And we're contractually obligated in a lot of those by having equal or better okay. in, in the plan. 43, uh, at our last meeting on the coaching resolution, there were some questions. I think Mr. Kopaz did some homework and came back with this resolution. Uh, we went over this yesterday at personnel. We had a resignation uh, of a football coach, uh, so he is going to volunteer his time when he can. He does not have the time to be a full-time coach, so we are not going to fill that position, so we'll be doing uh, with one less uh, paid assistant for football this year. And the other position, again, the uh, gentleman we hired to be an assistant coach did not have the time, so uh, we filled that with one of our contract <coughs> teachers who uh, has soccer, soccer experience, so we're excited to have him. 44 is the setting of our COBRA premium rates. This is in regards to what we were just talking about, about setting up a self-insurance. This is just starts to get our ducks in order if we decide to make any changes. Forty 
26, our bullying report. We did not have any incidents of uh, HIV this month. Auditorium tonight, tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, almost there. All right, back to a couple of uh, placements. 47, please uh, celebrate the children. We have uh, three students. This is their 10 month program. See on 48, which is limitless, that is for an ESY only summer program for one student. And then on 49 with A. Harry Moore School, you'll see a summer and a regular. That is it for resolutions for outside. For me, I just have one point of information for the trustees. Um, I gave out a handout on New Jersey School Boards Association, um, the October meeting. They've extended it. It's a four-day conference. Uh, Monday, I have to give you one question. Thank you. Uh, I'm using yours right now. That's right. Monday, October 23rd to Thursday, October 26th. I gave you a breakdown of what's listed so far for the courses. It looks like most of the governance courses for training are on the Thursday. Right. Okay. Uh, as soon as possible, please start checking your calendars uh, so that we so can, can make arrangements. You can only you can do one day, right? You don't have to do... They can just do one day, yeah. Okay, I just want to make sure. You could do whatever you You can just write down for the day yeah. and do you one hour. For one day. <laughs> uh, but if you choose to take other courses, we just need to know because of the, uh, the problem with housing. We have to make arrangements. We've got some, uh, some work to do with that. So if you could please look at your calendars, see what day you'd like to go. Uh, you could go on the New Jersey School Board site because they'll be changing this list uh, pretty much every day and they'll be adding other courses. Superintendent, that's all I have for outside. I'll turn the meeting over to you. Thank you, Dr. Mader. Good evening, everyone. Uh, since the last meeting, the cabinet has been working diligently to uh, reconfigure the district, as we had discussed with you previously, uh, to get the best educational opportunities for our students while still providing a savings is as much money as we can possibly do. I sent letters to the Academy parents regarding decentralization and a letter to all parents at the high school explaining the reconfiguration of that complex uh, regarding institution of deans and removal of some vice principals. Uh, I uh, also, with that removal of the vice principals and repositioning of directors, we now have coverage and secondary coverage in every elementary school in the city because we pulled out vice principals uh, during the initial crisis phase. Uh, so we, we will have personnel at least for some part of the week in every grammar school throughout the city. So that will be part of this plan as well. Uh, you might recall um, before I go to that, I have to say I went to opening night of Beauty and the Beast and it was an excellent production and I congratulate uh, all those students and staff members who were present uh, for that. It was an extremely uh, enjoyable evening. 
You probably recall uh, I, speaking about AppleTrack. And as you remember at the last meeting, AppleTrack was brought out by uh, Frontline. And Frontline now, the price of AppleTrack has, uh, it's not worth it for us to go in for the amount of people we have to hire at this point. Uh, as one of the results of that is Mr. DeLucia is working with uh, Mr. Copez to put together a program for evaluation, which they will explain shortly. But I asked the owner of Genesis to come in, uh, Mr. Rich Diltz, and he gave a pre presentation on Genesis, which is a student management software program. But it is also uh, a program that can expand out to other areas. So you'll hear a little bit about that uh, from Ms., uh, Dr. Degman as well as Mr. Copez. Uh, Mr. Belusha was at that presentation as well as Mr. Smith. Uh, I think it went about three hours or so. Yep. But we got some really great information. We had our IT people there as well. Um, so we're going to look closely at that program. Uh, Mr. Copez has been working with the principals and directors on staffing for September, so we're completely covered when we open. He also set up training sessions, arranged meetings with front, Frontline as well as Source for Teachers, and he's completed the post-graduation assistant brochure, and at this time he's going to uh, share with you in depth those items. Mr. Copez? So when we talk about Frontline, Frontline uh, offers and is a great product, the, uh, the AppleTrack, and that's the application um, process that's done online. Uh, many uh, districts around the Hudson County and the state are using it, and again, it is a wonderful pro uh, product, but we, we just can't afford it at this time. Um, so Mr. Delusha and myself have been working, um, and we're going to create our own. Uh, we have Google throughout the uh, district, um, and uh, Mr. Delusha came up with a great idea to use Google Suite so we can create our own online application process. So we are um, actively, daily working on this, and we'll have it up and running shortly, definitely before uh, the start of the school year. Um, and right now, uh, we are going you know, from district to district uh, and uh, looking on websites, stealing ideas, um, and you know, finding out what their best practices are. <laughs> yeah, just so making sure that you know, um, you know, we get the best uh, practices from all of those districts. Um, you know, uh, confident it's going to um, you know be a, a, an item that you know definitely helps us in my office uh, with paperwork. And um, when we're talking about decentralizing, um, giving our principals and assistant principals and directors the ownership. To uh, hire um, by a click of a button, now they'll have all of the applications and references, at, you know, um, on their computer. Um, and then, you know, if I click another button, Dr. Walker has it. So, um, um, I have a question. Yes. So, the beauty of AppyTrack was basically that you know you have this national database of teachers and administrators, and when we post online, they see there's an opening at Mount High School or Nicholas Oresco, whatever the case may be. How would we get our program out to that database? Like, how, how will the teachers know to apply here? The database will not be that that large. Actually, but the cost was, I believe, thirty thousand they wanted, and we're only hiring about six to eight teachers at this point. So it really, we have to do this for the current time until we get through this crisis. Then we could revisit it the following year. Right. Just we would love to purchase it just uh, for the cost at this time for the amount of positions that we're going to fill. You know, we still do have a, a, a you know, pool of uh, wonderful teachers uh, that we have not hired back yet that we know can do the job. I agree. Uh, just for those certifications that you know, we uh, are tough to find. And that's not just in Maryland, that's around the state. Um, and as I work with Mr. Delusia, we can make it our own. Um, and uh, you know, maybe one point we can get into the frontline database. But um, you know, right now, uh, I think this month we found two great candidates with uh, difficult search. So we are calling colleges. We are, are reaching out to all of our contacts to make sure that you know we have a certified teacher um, in, in you know every classroom in front of every uh, child, uh, even in those uh, tough to fill areas with those certs. Uh, but uh, you know, I'm positive that Dr. Uh, Mr. Delucia and myself um, are going to come up with a system. That is, uh, you know, going to be one that improves the personnel department. 
Uh, also, absence management is coming in. I emailed the personnel committee. Um, I'd like you to see those uh, presentations. I scheduled them. They're going to be coming in uh, to see what we can do with our substitutes on a daily basis. Um, and the front line is coming in. Um, uh, we have them in source for teachers and then also insight. So we're going to see um, you know, what each one brings to the table and uh, find one that we can afford and is best fit for our district. Again, um, staffing has been going uh, great. Uh, been working with our directors, calling our principals, even our ten-month principals, you know, um, daily to make sure that you know we are staffed and we are ready to open in um, September. So, if we uh, approve all the transfers and reassignments tonight, um, and they have a few uh, teachers that we are bringing back, uh, we'll be all set for September. And you know we'll continue to work to make sure that we're giving our kids the best education possible. One, one, one. I just want to like confirm once again that our first resource will be mm -hmm. look at teachers that we have not been able to rehire at this point, and the only time that we'll go out of that pool are for those certifications that our pool does not provide for us right now. We are, are, we're looking at those teachers we have not been able to pull back. Absolutely. We have a uh, you know, fine uh, <coughs> teachers. They were part of a reduction of force that had nothing to do with performance and only had to do with reasons for the economy. So um, absolutely, we want to you know, work to try to get every single one of them back. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Mr. Smith met with our broker, Tammy Smith, no relation, uh, regarding the new prescription plan. He'll discuss that as well as our transporting of the ESY students. Uh, he has begun the facilities tour of uh, all the schools in the city as well as the uh, complex at Juliet Street. Uh, and he'll share that information with you now, invite you all to attend. Uh, and he can also, you're going to share about that little accident? Yes. Okay. Uh, speaking of Juliet Street, nice on, on Friday, <laughs> I got a call from Mike Coburn that we lost power at Juliet Street. I said, what happened? And he said, I said, take a photo. The uh, electric pole on Juliet and 4th Street just snapped. And the portion of the pole was leaning on the I building. So they evacuated our building. Uh, Mr. Coburn got our employees out. And we were without power down there for about 19 hours. Now, as you know, if you've been down there, we have a massive walk-in freezer down there, and we have two uh, storage boxes that are refrigerated. Uh, Mr. Cooper had his staff check those the following day. We did not lose any product. We checked everything again on Monday. It took public service about 14 to 16 hours to restore power in that area. So uh, as part of the tours, though, this year is a CUSAC year. Uh, where we have to go throughout every building. We'll visit every building. I've started some tours over the course of, uh, of the summer. We usually go on a Tuesday morning about 10 o'clock. If you'd like to tour a building, we'll do all the elementary schools. We'll walk through the high school, the whole complex up here, uh, and we'll, we'll get a bird's eye view of uh, what needs to be done, uh, what's being done. Uh, we're in the process of getting ready for September. Uh, we're tidying up, we're painting, we're spiffing up, we're doing everything that we can in-house, waxing floors and, and classrooms and trying to make these buildings that average 85 years old. The brick and mortar does not owe us anything, but the buildings are on an average in the district of 85 years old and we've gotten very good service out of them and uh, we'd like to continue that. So if you'd like to join me, just email me or call my office. Let me know. Uh, I'll tell you where to meet us. And uh, you can do part of a building, a whole building. I like to hit two buildings uh, every Tuesday for the remainder of the summer. This way we get the whole district in. And uh, it's quite informative. Once you see and you walk through a building and you notice the differences between buildings, what one school may have and what one school might not have, uh, the look and feel of one building as opposed to the look and feel of another building and you'll get a chance to feel what those uh, dedicated teachers and staff members go through when they enter a building and uh, uh, we've been uh, really blessed in, in our buildings. Uh, they need work. Sure, they're 85 years old. I would need work at 85 years old also, but uh, we'll 
so we, we've done that. Says the uh, nurse. <laughs> the prescription plan we talked about before, uh, we're keeping everybody in the loop. Uh, Tammy Smith will be available at, uh, uh, through a quick email, a phone call. She's going to come to a couple more meetings. So if you have any pointed questions on the prescription plan, please. Uh, and uh, I'm excited about Enernock as well. Uh, Enernock, I said, quarterly they pay us. We just received a check for almost $9,000 for doing nothing more than turning off a few lights and air conditioners in some buildings over the course of the last weekend when they really weren't occupied. And uh, so uh, we're in those type of programs to save money. And uh, that's about all I have, Dr. Walker. Thank you. Yeah. I know that one of our goals this year, uh, and I'm is to get accreditation through the Middle States Association. It won't be this year. Well, I know we'll it's one of, we're going to start that process. With that in mind, um, how important is it for the buildings and the structure? How does that impact our accreditation with regard to Middle States? So it's not just for QSAC. There's also, isn't that an important there is aspect? A, there is with a component for facilities and Middle States. You're correct. Right. Curriculum uh, personnel, there's about 12 to 14 different categories. So. so it's not just for QSAC, it's for also with Absolutely. looking Absolutely. forward to getting our middle And, and it's important from back. an overall safety the standpoint basis, yeah. to have our yeah. buildings, you know, up yeah. to date and, uh, and clutter free and, and pristine as, as much as we can do considering uh, what they've been through. So but we're also trying to free up that Rod Grant money. We sent an email back down to the SDA uh, this morning. Uh, they are still talking it over with management, uh, their management, to see if we can start some of those much needed projects that we were unable, uh, that we did not start yet to, com to complete that rod grant process. So uh, we're on top of that as well. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Smith. Now, Mr. DeLucia, I think everything you were going to speak on, you were questioned on already, do you? So he gets a pass tonight. And uh, we'll go to Dr. Degman. He's been monitoring the credit recovery program and preparing for the quality single accountability continuum, uh, as well as the park. And uh, he also has some information on the Civil War Enrichment Program and the Field of Heroes. And I think uh, you have some awards on AP as well, correct? I'm excited about that. So just a few mm -hmm. items. In the high school, we continue with the credit recovery program, which is in its fifth year. Remember, we started out in its infancy, it was only ninth graders, and now we have nine through 12. Um, by succeeding in this program, we hope that these students move on to the next grade level, and with ESSA, or Every Student Succeeds Act, this is, will be an indicator of four-year graduation cohort. So students entering ninth grade need to exit by 12th grade. We want to keep them on track. Currently, we have um, 180 students enrolled, and 47 are enrolled in two classes. Um, tomorrow is the final day, and we, we hope that those 180 will pass. There were 12 students that did not really make it, but that was because they just didn't come, they were on vacations, they chose not to come back. So we had more than 180 to start with. But our, we did, but they won't factor into our account for um, budgetary reasons because they just were no shows. So that, that does help. Um, with respect to uh, professional development, as I spoke, we did receive the 2A money, so our directors begin planning for our September 29th, November 7th, and March full day trainings. And also, we'll have our consultants, you'll start to see resolutions to bring our specialists in to work with our um, uh, teachers. QSAC is the uh, monitoring of the district. It's every three years. This is a QSAC year. I know Trustee Garalek said on our last review, I did have a meeting yesterday where I, I did meet. They are changing the regs for 18-19, um, uh, so we will be going under the, the uh, current um, plan, and uh, we'll be working with the county office, and it's good that we're bringing these, um, Dr. Wonko is bringing the tech people and the curriculum auditors because it's going to give us a chance to look at our documents before the county looks at our documents, so it's good for us to uh, have that in place. But we, we have to continue with our curriculum writing because it is... Uh, um, it is, we have a diagnostics that have to be put in place. We have district assessments that are constantly changing. So we do have our writers coming in over the summer. And that's the best time to work in teams is the summer because there's really no distractions. So we're excited that we can get them in. Um, 
we, got, we had our final planning meeting and we do have to conduct the parts test for Algebra 1, Geometry and Algebra 2 students. Um, we did meet with the students to remind them that tomorrow's not your last day if you're in a math class. You need to show up on Monday and Tuesday. Please don't forget because Algebra 1 is also a graduation requirement. So this is an extra opportunity for those students to get a path to graduation. So we will have uh, students on Monday and Tuesday make up on Wednesday in the North Calf, South Calf, and we'll have a group right here in our board meeting room of um, uh, extended time students and accommodations. Civil War program was sponsored by the BEF and we're pleased um, that some of our students went to Gettysburg. So uh, they went last Wednesday, July 19th with their uh, social studies teachers. And um, on the 25th, some students actually went to the New York Historical Society to Gilder Lerman to look at artifacts related to um, uh, the Civil War. They saw copies of the Emancipation Proclamation and the 13th uh, Amendment and we thank the BEF for their support. And right now, we do have four social studies teachers from the Bayonne Board of Ed that are at Colonial Williamsburg for the, um, for the summer. Nice. Um, Field of Heroes, last year we had our inaugural Field of Heroes where we honored six veterans. We like to continue with that. Uh, we had our initial planning meeting. I did speak to um, our trustee, Garlick. He will be on our committee. We'll be meeting Monday at 2.30 uh, to begin planning. The tentative date now is November 6th. Uh, we're closed for Election Day on the 7th, and then the teachers' convention is when um, Veterans Day will be observed. As recall, last year we had um, our uh, Congressman series came in, and it was just uh, it was a wonderful ceremony. We had a flag that was over the Capitol, and it was raised, and we'll, we'll work with uh, Mr. Ward to get that moving. And actually, we had about 1,000 flags outside, uh, so we'll, we'll look for the community to get and donate. Uh, special services, the extended school year in Lincoln Community School and um, uh, Woodrow Wilson and Bayonne High School will wrap up on Monday. And, um, oh yes, we did, President Broderick talked about the post-graduation assistance program for students that the summer is coming to an end and possibly they're not going to go to college or they're looking for some direction. We did put this out. We're working very closely with our student youth-based service program, which is located in House 6. If any students, we sent uh, this to um, the students that graduated. And then we're going to work closely with Mr. Kopas to establish uh, another uh, job fair. So if any students are interested, Doc, I don't know. If you want to On share. that, Dr. Dagnan, sure. it's not limited to the recent graduate. It's, it's basically right. open to any graduate of Bayonne High School. They don't have to be a 2017 graduate. No, we put this on our website also, um, and it, we actually went two years back, and by word of mouth, if anybody wants to come, they can come to the Student Center in the summer and get some information. There is a one-stop uh, job opportunity in Union City. It's, it's the light railway. They can go upstairs and get some direction um, on, on some opportunities. But um, you're right, it's not, just the job fair is open to will be open to anybody. But the mailing went to Bayon to the recent graduates. Right, we, we only have recent graduates for the rest of the city. Okay. Thank you. All right. Makes sense. Publishing. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, last year I thought uh, my my understanding, my memory, uh, it it was a pretty successful event. Very. Right. And, and, and um, I think, as I recall, the surprise was it wasn't just. The 2016 graduates, we had a number of students like 2015, 2014, who would come in to that job fair that was being presented down at the estuary, as I recall. It was open to everybody, yeah. yeah but the I mailing know. went out to the recent graduates, but it was open to everybody. Everybody. It, it, it was really a pretty good idea. Uh, with respect to honors, as Dr. Wanko uh, alluded to, we, you know, Mr. Baccarella and our Director of Student Personnel Services are pleased to announce, and I'll send this home in the update, 39 uh, AP Scholars, uh, 26 are AP Scholars, 8 are AP Scholars with honor, and we have 5 AP Scholars with distinction. So we're proud of the efforts of our students that good? participated in the AP program. Good job. Yeah. And the last um, item I have is we are meeting with the eDoctrina and Genesis vendors, the eDoctrina for the curriculum mapping and curriculum lesson planning, and then Genesis, which is more of a student information system with respect to um, our reports for NJ Smart, our reports for our state mandates, whether it's bullying, ASSA counts, looking at um, 
real-time grades for students on the mobile app where they can get their access to report cards, academic history, um, service morning, discipline module. We can look at um, nurses, medical. So it's another platform that we're trying to integrate everything in, in, in at, a, at a lower cost. That's where we are right now. Thank you. But you did not mean real time. Not real time. <laughs> Close to. I thank you, Dr. Degman. I turn the meeting now over to our president, who is uh, in place of our president. This is, <laughs> would be the acting president or madam president. Does anybody else have anything they want to bring up? I know we have a lot for inside. So at this time, we're going to adjourn the uh, open workshop for a closed session for legal personnel negotiation. It is 717. The board will return in the auditorium.